Hi everyone, and welcome to this small segment of tutorial. I'm Sir Hoop Geek, and I'll try and explain a bit about what's going on on the screen. I'll talk a bit about the thought process behind the signatures and why I do the different things that I do. What we'll try to create is the signature you see on the screen, and if we'll just remove the guidelines, it will be easier for you to see what it actually is. It's a signature of Warlock Goblin in all its pride, and it's made from a model viewer render, which is this one. So, if we'll just go back to the signature, and we can cycle through the different layers, just so we can see what it is we're actually going to do. But I'll just tick off a few layers so we can see it in the chronological approach. So this is what we'll start out with. Then we'll just create a background, add some light in the background. I'll also put in a clipping mask in the background just for a few details. But then we'll define a light source. And we'll start creating some highlights on the render. Put in some more clipping masks for more details. And then in this signature I actually had a, a fix for the chain because it was very blurry but I'm not going to do it in this tutorial. And then we will start tweaking the signature a bit with a few different filters and layers, adjustment layers. Put on a border and you can add some text if you want to. I'm not going to do that because I'm horrible with it. So this is what we start out with and we'll create a new canvas and not this resolution because that would be far too big. So something more like 457 by 100 and uh, 150 pixels per inch and 8 bit color. That's good. So this is our signature. It's not really thrilling right now and what we'll try to create is, is basically yeah that. But as you can see I have some guidelines and these guidelines you can create by the rulers you see I have. If you don't have the rulers, you can press Ctrl R and the rulers will come forth. Then you can just drag out lines. And basically what I'm trying to do is the rule of third as you saw. This is to help me place the render in, in a good position. So let's just try and create something that looks remarkably like the rule of third. Really don't want to use a lot of time on this. I have a perfectionist, sorry. So this will do. Uh, now that we have it, we can hide it by pressing Ctrl H. Just a little good thing to have. Anyhow, we'll get this render out. Choose select color range, click the background, press OK, and I can actually see that we have some background down below. I don't hope this is going to be a problem at all. Anyhow, you press Ctrl. Shift I in order to invert the selection. Control C, Control V, copy paste, and no, that background actually shouldn't give us problem at all. So we'll just place the render, duplicate it by uh, pressing Control J, and just placing it around. Make sure that everything is covered up. And when I create a background, I really don't want this bright green spot so I'll duplicate it again then yeah transform it in order to create some other flow basically you press control T then right click in the box in order to do the transformation as you saw I flipped it horizontal and just flip it back again and then place the shoulder over that green spot and of course delete the new green spot we've just created and use a bigger brush use a soft brush so as you can see it's very hard what's going on uh, this is actually not really delete that's because the opacity is only to 27 so put it up to 100 and you can actually start deleting so this looks somewhat great so we are going to start merging it down control uh, e in order to merge the selected layer down to the layer below so just merge it all down until everything is on one layer and yes as you can see I actually had a spot where there was nothing and we can't really smudge out into the nothingness so what we'll do is duplicating the layer by pressing control J again and then move the layer underneath it all just a bit so that spot that bold spot is covered and just merge it all down again so what we'll do now is taking 
the smudge tool, and here you can actually see I have my smudge brush up. It's a chalk brush with some smudge settings on it, and you can find this chalk brush in the description of this movie. Anyhow, you can see I have shape dynamics on, I have some scattering, some very high scattering, and this will just create some random effects in it, and that's really what we're looking for in the background, just, just a way to have this random effect. And then I have some transfer, but this is not really important, because as you can see, it's actually controlled by pen pressure, so this is only if you have a tablet, like a Wacom tablet or something. So really not an important thing, and smoothing should be on by default. If not, you can check check it on. It's it's when smudging it actually doesn't do that much. You just like having it on. But if you want to find this whole uh, brush palette, this is the icon you will be looking for. You'll be able to find this icon whenever you have something that uses a brush. That means if you're using the smudge tool or the brush tool, delete, and also use it with the burn tool. And since I'm using CS5. I'm capable of actually finding it up right next to my brush settings. Uh, but if you're using something like CS1 to CS4, you will actually find it out here instead. If you are unable to find it, you can also try and go up into Window and try and find it. Should be brush. It was brush. Yes, just click on the brush. Mind you that my setup for um, for Photoshop is a bit customized and I do have things lying out on my second screen like my history and I do have some other things lying out there but I'll basically try and pull out or pull in things that we are going to use so you can see what's going on so I think we should actually start now so just start using the smudge tool remember to take down the strength to something like 20% or something just use some random motions and try and save some of the texture that's actually in the background so you don't just smudge the whole thing. So we'll just place in the render again by doing Ctrl V. Because as you can see in this signature I do have more details like the tentacles from the shoulders. We're going to use that right now. We can get it from the render. Basically place your render and with a soft brush just erase around uh, the tentacle so it's still there and it somewhat fades out into the background. Just duplicating this and transform it, and it actually helps if you have transform on before you try and invert it. And just place the tentacle around in the corner where we know we're not going to place our render. So this looks somewhat fine. Just merge it all down again. And try and smudge it out into so it actually becomes part of the background again. Right, so this is actually starting to look good whether or not you believe it. So place in the render again, then bring up your guidelines by using Ctrl H and transform it by Ctrl T so we can scale it down a bit as it's far too big for the signature. Press enter when your transformation is done and then hide the guidelines again. Duplicate the layer, going to Filter, Sharpen, and I'm going to use Smart Sharpen. As you can see, I have my settings for my shots, Smart Sharpen here, and it's an amount of 70% and a radius of 0.3 pixels. The reason why I use Smart Sharpen is that it gives a better result than normal Sharpen, and why I duplicate the layer is so I can always control how much the Sharpen is going to actually affect the render, because if, if the Sharpen was too much, I, I would be able to turn down the opacity of um, of the smarten layer, as you can see here, could turn it down, but as for now it's actually quite good, we've got some great details on the character through the sharp, so we're just going to merge it down again, onto the render layer. So, let's continue on here, we'll actually start out by making some light in the background, just to have even more details out there. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set the blending options to overlay as you saw I just did for the layer and then we're going to use a brush I have far too many brushes that I actually need to clean up with. but let's see if we can actually find a good brush yes this one 
it's a flame brush. Um, it's very good for uh, for doing these effects in uh, in the background. I really love this brush. I will try and actually find a link for it and put it in the description of this film. Anyhow, when I have the brush tool selected, I can press Alt and then I get the eyedrop tool. I'm just going to pick out the color from the hood, so we still stay in the same uh, color balance of the whole signature. So don't start to introduce colors that actually doesn't really mix well. But just pick out a color and then make it way lighter by pulling it towards the white source when you go into the color pick. And we still stay in, in the same uh, in the same color area, so it doesn't really matter that we go all the way up down. But it's just if it was too dark it wouldn't translate well with the overlay. So just place it around just control set whenever you don't really think it looks good. And right now we can actually start defining some shadows in the background so the whole signature doesn't just splat out in uh, into everything. So select the burn tool and I use midtones and remember to take down the exposure. Because the default option is 50% but that's far too much and it will actually make it look really really tough on the signature. So around 10 to 20 percent. Just gonna burn the edges. Remember to select the background uh, layer and just encase the whole signature a bit so we don't have the colors just going all the way out. Yeah, that. So now we have some background lighting and we have started to define some shadow already in the signature. So what we're going to do now is try and get out a light source for the signature. So again, create a new layer, put it to overlay, and we are going to use a brush. So use B in order to activate the brush. We'll just try and find a soft big brush. As you can see here, I can get up my uh, my brush selections uh, by right click whenever I have a brush to activate it. And just like brush palette, if you have it in uh, Smudge or Burn or something, you can just right click. But if you right click outside of the canvas, let's see if we can do that. Yeah, you'll get this option. Up. So right click inside the canvas, and now we can select a big soft round brush in order to make the light source. Yes, that's good. Oops. I actually don't like this color. <laughs> so we're going to make it greenish. Yeah, that's better. So place light source with the soft brush and you can duplicate this layer in order to intensify the light source. Remember you can always take down the opacity of it and as you can see it is too way too much up. So three layers will do. The last one we can just change the opacity a bit so it's not as hard on the eye. And let's see, let's render a bit so it works better with the light source. Yeah, this will actually be great. Now that we have a light source, we can start uh, finding some shadows. So, again, use the burn tool. Yeah. I'll, I'll just try and actually show you. How the light source looks, and yeah, that really was more of what I was looking for. So let's just this one, yep, and let's try again. Yeah, that's much better. And yeah, this is just in order to show you how our light source somewhat looks. It's, I hope this will make it easier for you to understand. Select the render layer, zoom in a bit so we can actually apply the shadow more detailed. No. Uh, let's try this one. No, it's good. Ah, oh well. Use the burn tool and as said, remember to have uh, the render layer. So, uh, yeah. Let's actually start calling these something so you can follow. So, this one would be the background, this one would be the background light. 
this one would be in the light source. This one we can just delete, that was for the gradient maps so you can see. So now that we have our render select, we can start applying some shadows, especially on the hood, as this would be encased in shadows on the dark side. Because it's not really hit by the light source, we will start applying some uh, shadows to the shoulder and also to the palms. I'm just zooming a bit more. Um, let's take that smaller brush. Just apply some shadow on top of it because the light source won't really hit it. Ah, uh, and as I can see right now that I've zoomed in, we do have a blue border, which actually doesn't look so good. So we can actually fix this. Control click the thumbnail of uh, the render layer. This will bring out the selection for the layer, and this is actually a very good thing. This whole selection point. You can also select other layer selections, and if you hold down Shift, you can select multiple layers. This is very good for, especially also when we're going to apply highlights. You're going to see me use this, but for now, load up the selection. Go to Select, Modify, Contract, and Contract by one pixel. Then invert the selection by Control Shift I, and then press Delete. And this should actually have deleted that blue border which we saw. And yes, it has. Absolutely great. I, I didn't notice it in the beginning, but as we zoomed in, I could see it. And once you just see it, you can't unsee it. So let's go back to the burn. Start applying some more shadows. Just, you, you can be fairly sloppy with this as long as the exposure is not too high. So, and some more to the shoulders. So it's it's mostly important to just hit the places where there are most shadows. Just so you get that a bit darker. So as you can see if, if you take that up the exposure too much it's not really doing what we want. So I I, I like the eleven percent. So right now we are going to apply some highlights. So load up the selection again, create a new layer, set that to overlay just use the brush tool need to get that smaller yep that's good just remember to use the exact same color as you use for the light source as this light source will affect our render with the light the color of the light so now we're going to apply some to the horn and we can just delete smaller brush uh, press E to get the erase tool up so we'll just delete whatever came onto the shoulders because it's already affected by the big light source we placed. So what we really want was to apply some highlights to the horn on it. So just delete whatever came down to the shoulder. Well, it won't really look good. So brush tool again. Create a new layer. Set it to overlay. So we need some overlay on the hood. So just get a soft brush again. And delete what came onto the shoulders because it became too too grey and let's just delete this and this tongue no I don't actually like it on the tongue yeah it, it would also be affected and take down the opacity a bit because it, it became far too intense and let's see Deselect all. Uh, control D will deselect your selection, and we will actually make a light source out here, so we got something in the background and reason to also make some highlight on that shoulder. So let's take a big soft brush again. Yeah, place a faint, faint, faint light source. Load up the selection again. New layer set to overlay. And just do highlights on this shoulder also. 
just repetition, repetition, repetition is all good. It's always great. And the reason why I take off this selection is, as you saw, else I will start painting on the background. But with this selection, I can actually only paint on the render. Just follow, um, follow the edge, and then get my highlights as I want them, so they don't really affect the background. As you can see, we can turn it on and off, so it's a bit easier to see the effect it gives. So we have some uh, some faint light source out there, just just in order to bring out the render a bit more. As you can see, it's actually starting to look a lot like the signature we had in the beginning. So what we're going to do now is I am sorry, tedious work, but it will make it easier for you to actually follow what's happening. So this was quick highlight. That's a new light source. Show the colors. Yes. Yeah. So. Now we're going to create something called a clipping mask. So I create two layers, and why I create two layers will be more, uh, more yeah. You you will see it in a few seconds. But on the top layer, we will go to image, apply image, and this will just merge all the layers we have on up until now onto that layer you have selected. So I'm going to transform it. Control T to transform. Just gonna scale it. Remember when you scale to hold down shift so keep the proportions or else you'll get something completely skewed. But now I'm going to use the clone tool in order to uh, to clone. Believe it or not, that's actually what it does. The the way you use the clone tool is you have the layer selected where you want to clone from and then you press Alt to put down a point and then you can start uh, painting with the the clone tool and yeah this is just to get out the shoulders another way to do it is just duplicate it and then delete around just move it around remember to merge it down so right now go up to layer uh, create clipping mask and we have now got clipping mask where we can start painting these small chunks and details Let's use a splatter brush. Let's see if I can find a splatter brush. Again, far too many brushes. It's always confusing. Just gonna take some of these off so I can actually trust what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, most uh, brushes come with with some of these settings, but as you can see, I'm I'm actually painting with the with the whole clipping mask we put in that was an awful brush and not to show it, so let's just take it on. Yeah, you'll do. So you can see when I paint with a brush I actually get what I had in the clipping mask. So let's see. Uh just rem we are going to select both of them, just shift click the layers and then duplicate the layers drag the new duplicated layers uh, down under the render layer so we can start uh, painting some clipping masks behind the whole thing as you can see and we can paint in front of it this clipping mask so, so find a smudge brush not really smudge brush but a splatter brush Let's see if we can do oh. yeah. yeah. We'll actually do. So try and get some chunks. As you can see I, I keep deleting when I don't think it looks good. Um yeah. Remember, um, to have the 
good thing about clipping mask to remember is that the thing you use as a clipping mask should fill out the entire canvas or as you can see when I take the image and just pull it out of the canvas the color you're painting with on the clipping mask is actually the color of your brush instead of you using the chunks from the image just make sure that the image you use for clipping mask fills out the entire canvas and yeah let's just start naming these layers also just for quick measurement so splatter and clipping mask you can be clipping mask also and you can be splatter I just really like to do some splatter in this one also so again pick brush I'll going to use a new brush just not to be repetitive. So let's you nah, it's, it's hard to pick up these brushes really. Uh, you either yeah. Uh just gonna take off the different effects again. I said some brushes come with the these settings and really just load up brush palette and take them off so you can actually trust what it is you're seeing on the screen. So let's see. Yeah, that's a bit too heavy. Let's just use the edge of this brush and we can delete, always delete the things we don't think that look good. So yeah, there's a lot of you comes down here. better yeah now we have clipping mask and some details remember if if you wanted to clipping mask is a it's a funny thing it's very hard to explain but if you wanted to apply some fern to the clipping mask you would have to do it on the image you have used as a clipping mask you can't do it on the brush that you've made the splatter brushes um but if you wanted to uh, place some highlight, you would actually have to load the selection of uh, of the brush. And if you wanted to sharpen it, you would also have to sharpen the brush. So, yeah, it's, it's really just play around with clipping mask. Because it's very, very hard to tell another person how clipping mask works. Anyhow, create a new layer. Apply image. Because we are going to do a lot of filters to tweak this image to make it look better. So we're just merging all the layers at the top layer. Go to filter. We're going to do blur, Gaussian blur, and I have it to five pixels because that's basically what keeps it good. So. And this was a horrible idea, as you can see, we've now ruined the entire signature. But we can fix this by setting it to soft light, and as you can see, it really enhanced the contrast of the whole thing. It actually made it look kind of soft. But it's just way over the top, so we are just going to reduce the opacity of that layer a bit, so it's not working so hard on the signature. But as you can see, this really creates some good contrast, and it makes the image look more appealing. And this is actually, up until now, I have been using that magical plugin called Topaz Clean. So you can see, you can actually get this quality of render without using Topaz Clean. Now Topaz Clean is a very, very great plugin and but it's not really you don't need it in order to start making signatures. I know a lot of the people on MMO chat use Topaz Clean and but I said you really don't need it in order to create these signatures. With just these few tweaks we can actually create a render of this quality. So, but yeah, definitely check out Tools Clean on uh, their website. I'll put down a link in the description of this review so you can check it out. You can get a, a 30 day free trial of it before you actually have to spend some money on it. it. It is somewhat costly, but as I said, it is a really great and user friendly uh, plugin. So, definitely check it out. So, new layer. And easier to spell Gaussian blur. And this layer is actually going to be the 
to pass. Yes. Now you'll see the token as an action. Again, apply the image and go up to filter, token's lapse, token's clean. And this is the new token's clean free. As you can see, you can do some horrible things to an image. So that's not what we're going to do. We just want to, again, enhance the signatures. Uh, Details a bit, so just bring the accent up to not quite but just the sharpness tweak a little bit. What you could do is also put up the the clean strength in order to get this painty smudgy feel, but in this case it actually looks horrible, so we won't be doing that. Oh, so sorry. Thank you. No, this looks somewhat good. It's a very, very subtle effect so I said you really don't have to go out and spend the money on it just for signatures it, you can use it for other works in this case again um, again we're going to apply the image because here in the end I like to do some shadow fixes so we're going to call this shadow fix you we could do that without moving the layer up that's so great so zoom in Select the burn tool, just use a big brush. Yep. Again, remember how your light source looks like and how it will actually affect the image when you start burning. But again, try to apply some of the shadows that you still need in the image on this last layer. Uh, so we're just gonna put some on this center. Yeah. It actually affected the render also, and I don't really want it to affect it. I just want it to affect the tentacle in the background. So, yeah, what we can do is load up the selection of the render and just invert the selection. And now we can just burn the background without actually affecting the render. It's still part of our selection. Light and shadow really do a lot in a signature, so take the time to work with it because it can just make or break a signature. And what do we need some more? Just I, I keep on zooming in so it's easier to see. If, if we wanted to actually get some highlight on uh, the clipping masks, we would have to load up the selection of uh, of the Clipping mask splatter brush and then just set the layer to overlay. Create a new layer all the way on top, or else you won't be able to see it because you have to apply the image three times now. So, soft brush, just brush around with again your light source color. Down here, it wouldn't make any sense to apply highlights because it's already within the light source. So, let's see. Yeah, this would actually affect my paint light. Sort of view earlier. Let's just zoom in more just in order to see if we can actually see anything getting changed. It's this is just detailed work. It's, it depends on how perfect you want your signatures because in most cases people actually won't notice this. Um, the way I get the hand up is simply just pressing down space, that will, uh, that will select the move tool and you can just move the image around but you need to zoom in quite a lot when you're working with signatures before you can actually move it around it's, it's, it's a great little fiff to do uh, when you're working with, with big images so now we're going to finish this up by using some adjustment layers and as you can see you could either use the button down in the layer panel or you can go to image adjustment and here you can also find different things. So right now we're going to use a color balance and well this is actually the old color balance system. Uh, I didn't know that because I normally use it down here. So apply an adjustment and we are going to get some more yellow greenish flake looking. So 
adjustment layers are really really great in order to uh, to, to, to balance out your signatures if, if you have a lot of colors in your signature the color balance will actually make these if you just sit and play around with it a bit will make it look way better because everything will start cooperating and actually be in balance if you want to check out what different things do in the different bars just crank it up completely uh, so you can actually see what it affects right now we're just working with the shadows Which is very great for pictures that don't have blue in it. If if you have blue or purple, I would say don't use photo filter because it really won't work with your signature. But else it could actually bring in some more warmth, some more play to this. So now we're going to use a gradient for that, a black and white gradient for that. Set it to luminosity. The blending option to luminosity and as you can see this also really enhances the contrast of it and it really bring out the shadows and the light in the signature but having it to a hundred percent opacity it's just don't do it because it looks very hard on the signature so now we're going to uh, create a border you can either press ctrl a which will just select your entire canvas and you can use the marking tool by pressing m when you have the selection, go to select, modify border, and I have a border of two pixels. Um, you can either choose a dark color in your signature and use that as a border, or you can just choose, as I do here, black. And that will actually get you a border. And you can duplicate it and merge down the layers in order to bring out the border even more. If you think it was too thin, and this would actually be it. Done. It's actually for the signature. So all you have to do now is add some text. But I said I really don't want to do that because I am so horrible. Anyhow, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can contact me on MMO chat. And I am so eager here. And you can just send me a private message on <laughs> several friends. Well, me, I have a lot of friends apparently. <laughs> Anyhow, this should be all for me. I hope you enjoyed this and that it actually helped you. So, goodbye, people. Thank you for watching. You have all the weapons you need. Now, fight.